Mike, do you know how to play chess? I'm not super good at it. I remember most of the rules. I can get my head around it. I feel like every time I sit down to play, there's a rule I'd forgotten that someone else uses to defeat me. We should play together. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> what if we threw in some punching? I don't really know if that fits in the spirit of the game. Well, uh, don't tell that to the World Chess Boxing Organization, the WCBO, or the WCBA, the World Chess Boxing Association. One of those real groups. Two, why do they both need to exist? <laughs> Can't they just be one? You know, you've got to organize and you have to associate. So clearly we need to back up a little bit here because I would assume for most listeners this doesn't make any sense. I don't see the problem with the script so far. I think it's perfect. Uh, yep, yeah, sh- it's nothing wrong with uh, the script. There is, uh, not that this show scripted, there's nothing wrong with what we're saying. Uh, it's just I'd also never heard of chess boxing. We don't do this very often. Uh, but I'm going to read to you from Wikipedia directly. Oh, please. The basic idea in chess boxing is to combine... And that's one word, by the way. Chess boxing. The basic idea... Well, it depends on who you ask. The WCBO has it as two words. Mm-hmm. The title of the Wikipedia article is two words. But the article itself and the WCBA use it as one word. Maybe this is why they split up. You know, mm. the WCBA... Like a church and state kind of thing? They needed, no, they needed one word, and the WCBO insisted on two words. Anyway, to read from Wikipedia, the basic idea Please. in chess boxing is to combine the two disciplines, one demanding mentally, the other physically, into a merger sport that demands the most of its competitors. I'm so inspired. I want someone to demand the most of me. I do. Chess boxing had shown up in a film in the 1970s and French comics in the 1990s, but Dutch performance artist Lepe Rubin was the first to put on an actual event where participants would box in a ring, then go make a move on the chessboard. The first competition took place in 2003 in Berlin, and the first world championship followed in Amsterdam. In what seems like a very suspicious set of circumstances to me, Rubin was named the first ever world chess boxing champion after his opponent exceeded the chess time limit in the 11th round. Hey, look at me. I invented a sport and I'm the champion. So I do find it strange. I'm not going to argue because, you know, if this person was still around, it'd probably just punch me in the face, right? So... (laughs) What am I going to do? And beat you at chess. Mm -hmm. Over the next several years, the sport grew to include more than just its creator and a few people that I just assumed that he knew. It's like Fight Club. (laughs) Really civil Fight Club. Very fancy. In 2006, more than 800 spectators filled the Gloria Theater in Germany to watch the World Championship. By the end of the decade, chess boxing clubs had sprung up in London, New York, and across India. There were more competitors in the second and third Indian championships in the summer of 2013 and early 2014 than in any chess boxing events ever before that point, with more than 245 fighters of varying age and weight classes. By then, clubs were popped up also in places like Helsinki and Moscow as well. Today, the sport can also be found in China, Costa Rica, Czech Republic, Finland, France, Iran, Italy, Madagascar, Mexico, the Philippines, South Africa, Spain, Turkey, Ukraine, and more. I think we should talk about how the sport actually works, but after this break. It's just chess and punching. What do you need to know? That's true. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. (laughs) There's a lot more. I'd like to thank Discourse for sponsoring this episode of Ungeniused. Discourse was founded in 2013 by Jeff Atwood, from Stack Overflow, Robin Ward, and Sam Saffron. It's a flexible open source community platform where discussions are searchable so you can find all the relevant details for your project. And the platform is designed with moderation in mind. It's all really important in internet communities. And Discourse helps you keep the discussion on track and high value while minimizing the impact of trolls and spam. It integrates with a bunch of other stuff like Zapier, Patreon, Memberful, and more. I love internet communities. I grew up in a time where if you were working on something or needed to learn something, you'd go to forums, right? Forums were the thing. And discourse is that in our age. You can build a community. I host one for Mac Power users, another podcast that I'm on here at Relay. 
But we have a vibrant community there, people asking questions, helping each other with their technology. And it's just a great place. Discourse offers a 100% 14-day free trial. After that, plans start at about $100 a month. And the folks at Discourse are giving Ungenius listeners 50% off your first two months after you start your subscription. Just go to discourse.org and use the coupon code RELAY2021 when signing up. That's discourse.org, code RELAY2021, when signing up for 50% off your first two months. There's also Discourse for Teams. So if you have a small team or a business looking to use Discourse to collaborate, you can set up a private focused instance with added features, including a new sidebar, icebreakers, team updates, and more to help teams work together more effectively. There isn't currently an offer code for Teams, but those plans start at just $20 a month. So if you want to learn more about that, go to teams.discourse.com. Our thanks to Discourse for their support of the show and Relay FM. So, chess boxing. A match consists of 11 alternating rounds of chess and boxing. <laughs> can, can you imagine starting and ending with chess, like all civilized fights do? Uh, each round lasts three minutes, followed by a one-minute break. We need a breather. Get some yeah. water. <laughs> collect your thoughts. Relax your mind again. The know. chess rounds are played under time control, with a total of nine minutes allotted to each player for the entire match. These matches can end in several ways. Victory via a knockout in the ring. Victory by checkmate in chess. Loss due to exceeding the allotted time for chess. Lost by resignation in either discipline. Disqualification of one fighter by the referee in either discipline following multiple warnings. I don't know, like throwing chess pieces at each other or something. Yeah. Or like you go to punch somebody and the rook is really like in between your finger, your knuckles, you know? Oh, I have a question mm-hmm. that I don't know the answer to. And I don't know if we speak about it here. Boxing gloves and chess pieces? How does that work? You just take that's what the minute's for. So you can lace up and Do you lace think? down, I guess. Because like my understanding is like boxing gloves get like taped to the fighters' arms I don't know. for interesting. I don't know the answer to that. And it just popped into my head then. But I can imagine can you imagine like just knocking every piece in the board over with your huge boxing glove? If you are a listener and you chess box, please send us an email. Mm-hmm. So if the chess game ends in a draw before the final round, just one final round of boxing is held. And if that round doesn't include a knockout, the fighter who is ahead on boxing points wins the match. I think it makes the most sense to finish with the physical part because ch- chess stalemates can last forever. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that the Netflix TV show about chess. There you go. However... If the chess draw occurs in the final round, the fighter ahead on points is immediately declared the winner. So there is a slight difference. In either case, if the bout ends with both fighters tied on points, the one playing the black chess pieces wins the bout due to not having first move advantage on the board. That rule's a bit theoretical anyway, as that scenario has not yet occurred in practice as of this recording in all uh, legally registered chess boxing competition. And as you may have guessed, you can't just walk in off the street and join the sport. The current minimum requirements to fight in a chess boxing global event include an ELO rating of 1,600 don't worry, I'll get to that in a second. And a record of at least 50 amateur boxing bouts fought in either boxing or another similar martial events, just other fights, say. An ELO rating is basically a way of scoring someone's skill level in games like chess. It's actually applicable across a bunch of different games. I wonder how many people on the planet are that good at chess and boxing. It can't be many people, right? No, it feels super selective, to be honest. And I was thinking, wonder which one of these is easier to learn. Is it easier to be a good boxer and learn chess? Or is it easier to be a good chess player and learn boxing? I honestly don't <laughs> know because I'm not good at either, either of these things. So. <laughs> Athletes have to train in speed chess and be able to play calmly after three minutes of boxing each other, which as you would imagine would get harder as the game goes on, right? Like you're, mm-hmm. I don't know, you're more amped up as you go. 
To practice, participants will play track chess or stair chess, which swaps all the hitting for running. I don't want to play that game either. So this is like, I guess you would have a chess board and you'd play a piece and you'd run up a flight of stairs and run back down again and play the other thing. Yeah. I don't know why the running. I mean, you can you just use like a speed bag or something. I don't know. Again, what do I know? <laughs> uh, this is amazing. Thank you, Justin, for sending this in. Chess boxing, another chapter in Ungenius exploration of unusual sports we do love a weird sport on this show <laughs> if you've got a weird we sport uh suggestion you should send it in because you're pretty likely to get your suggestion on the show if you want to learn more about chess boxing with or without a space in the middle of it head on over to our website at relay.fm slash ungenius slash one three two while you're there you can send us an email with your own suggestion for the show pick something weird on wikipedia and send us a note you can also do that on Twitter. The show is at Ungeniused. You can find Mike there as I-M-Y-K-E. And you can find me on Twitter as I-S-M-H. And until next time we... I don't know. I don't even know what to say. The next time we step into the ring, Mike, say goodbye. Cheerio. Bye, y'all.